Its founder and leader is the world's richest pastor. Its flagship church seats 10,000 congregants in a replica of the Temple of Solomon. Seven million Brazilians call it their church, and there are millions more worldwide, including 300 churches in the United States. In Portuguese, it is Igreja Universal do Reino de Deus, and in English, it is the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, often branded simply as the Universal Church. The church affirms the Trinity, one God and three persons, affirms the virgin birth, deity of Christ, and human sin nature. They affirm Christ's substitutionary death for human sin, justification through faith in Christ's blood, and affirm Christ's resurrection and future physical return. The church requires a profession of a born-again experience for church membership and teaches two ordinances, water baptism by immersion and the Lord's Supper. They also teach a future judgment day and literal heaven and hell. The doctrines presented so far would put the church in an evangelical category. Their teaching on baptism, however, leans toward it being necessary for salvation, rejected by evangelicalism. Universal Church Bishop Bira Fonseca, known as Bishop Joshua, writes, Yes, baptism in the waters is like the visa to enter into heaven. Therefore, Jesus said, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark 16.16 16. Bishop Joshua has also stated, When we give our lives to Jesus, we need to be baptized in waters for us to bury our past and receive a new life. Bishop Adir Macedo, the founder and leader of the church, writes, You should decide to surrender to the Lord Jesus today. Put your sinful body to death through the baptism in water and seek to be born of the Holy Spirit so that one day you may also call him your father. Additionally, the church teaches charismatic theology and has been called neo-Pentecostal by some. From their statement of faith, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, empowering believers for service with accompanying supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit and in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The office of apostle is still held to as stated in their statement of faith. We believe in the divinely ordained ministries of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Divine healing is taught. In the Universal Church's Statement of Faith, it is said, We believe that divine healing seen in the Old Testament and the New is an integral part of the gospel. After visiting many Universal Church services in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, as part of her master's degree thesis, Sarah Rochelle Nice described the practice of faith healing in the congregations in this way. There are two methods of faith healing. Church employees heal individual worshipers who walk in two single file lines up to the stage and receive a blessing and holy oils on their foreheads, or the pastor mass faith heals the entire congregation by having everyone drink from water bottles that they themselves have brought from home that he has collectively blessed from the stage all in one fell swoop. This taking place in Nisa's presence doesn't indicate that these methods are the common practice of all churches in the denomination, but it does show that faith healing as part of the services is something that takes place in the universal church. The mention of holy oil is consistent with other reports of the church using oil widely in their practice. On the church's South African website, they write, The distribution of the oil from Mount Sinai. The holy oil has been a significant part of people's lives for thousands of years, and in biblical times it was used to anoint people so that they could receive strength to overcome their problems. It was one of God's ways of blessing his people through their faith in him. God would accomplish the things that they could not through his intervention. That is why you will use the holy oil as an expression of faith, and God will make what you thought was impossible, possible. Perhaps you are facing many problems and you do not know where to turn, or maybe you want to see an area of your life improve. Regardless of the scenario in which you find yourself, if you believe that God can change your situation, he will. Whether you have a great deal of faith or whether you have a small amount of faith, that faith itself can cause a complete change in your life. The oil can be used for the sick, the emotionally distressed, your loved ones and family, your workplace, things that represent difficulties. You will use the holy oil to anoint the things that represent the aspects of your life you would like to change, and you will ask God for what you want. This is your opportunity to ignite great changes in your life. Many people have seen positive changes in different areas of their lives by using the oil. In January of 2020, the Jamaica Star reported on this same promotion from the church and how it was taking place in Jamaica in an article titled, Crowd Flocks Church for Holy Oil. Yesterday, dozens of first-time attendants flocked the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God on Maxfield Avenue to receive a bottle of what church members call the Holy Oil of Mount Sinai. 
Yesterday during service, a bishop asked the congregation to raise items, their bags, purses, and any other object that had to do with their finances for prayer. A woman was observed lifting a container of sweets in the air, hoping to receive a financial transformation. Like the woman, there were a lot of other persons who came seeking remedies for prosperity and healing for ailments. A lot of the newcomers stated that they learned about the Universal Church on television, while others were invited by loved ones. With more than 20 churches in the country, the church designates specific days for different types of blessings that persons may seek. Another church website advertised the Day of Power, with a logo denoting a bottle of oil. For thousands of years, olive oil has been used for anointing as an act of faith. For example, in biblical times, those who were sick were instructed to be anointed with oil and prayed over. The simple action of faith, anointing with the holy oil, can be used to awaken your faith. It can act as a point of contact between you and God. Anointing, therefore, becomes like turning on a signal flare to the heavens, a sign to God that you require special attention at a time of need. Come and learn how you can transform your life. Experience the power of God in your life with the belief that God can bring a change where there seems to be no way. Also, a bottle of blessed oil will be given free of charge. The initial evidence doctrine taught in classical Pentecostal denominations that speaking in tongues is always the initial physical evidence of Holy Spirit baptism is not accepted by the Universal Church. Bishop Adir Macedo, writing on the church's website, says, No pastor, assistant, bishop, or human being has the authority to say if you were or not sealed with the Holy Spirit. Only the Spirit himself can confirm with your spirit whether it happened or not. Speaking in tongues is not a sign of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Like most Pentecostals, the Universal Church is Arminian and not Calvinist, teaching that a person can fall away from salvation. The Universal Church teaches tithing 10% of one's income and making additional offerings beyond that. Promises are made that giving to the ministry and being a good follower of Christ will lead to one becoming wealthy, and that a person with problems in their life is not following God properly. Bishop Joshua writes, Would it be fair if a man is very rich, but his son is sleeping under a bridge? How could you explain that and make sense of it? It's impossible. The same applies to the life of those who are in misery. If God is powerful and great as we believe, then how can his children suffer so much? It doesn't make sense. Many say, I am living in suffering and shame because this is the will of God. Others even say, God is testing me. But you need to understand that your problems do not come from God because God cannot deny himself and God is not unfair. There is no unrighteousness or injustice in God. The enemy brings problems to you and makes you think that it's from God. But God is a righteous God and he wants you to have a blessed life that glorifies his name. Now you have to cry out for justice. You have to claim the rights that the Almighty God is giving you, the right to be blessed, happy, and fulfilled. Bishop Joshua also states, You might not have the car you want. You might not have the salary you want. You might not have the papers you want. But God wants to make you rich right now. But first, he must make you rich in faith. Bishop Macedo says in the article, Why should you be rich? If you are a Christian that does not have a happy love life, prosperous and healthy, then you do not know the abundant life the Lord Jesus brings to those who accept him. You may have the Holy Spirit, be part of various outreach groups, be an active assistant in the work of God, but your life still does not serve him. Former Brazilian Congressman João Batista Ramos da Silva, a universal church pastor and church insider, explains the church's view of riches this way, as reported by Bloomberg Businessweek. In the 21st century, if Jesus were here today, he'd be wearing fine leather shoes. He'd have a shirt of French silk, perhaps, or Japanese with a suit of the best quality, a Pierre Cardin or whatever. And he'd travel by helicopter or private jet. And all of this, for what? To better preach the word of God. The church's founder, Bishop Macedo, as mentioned, is a billionaire. And his media empire in Brazil is used in part to promote the universal church. And it goes both ways because part of the way he has amassed the media empire is by taking out interest-free loans from the church. This and other financial practices have led to criminal investigations into Macedo and the church. The Universal Church holds various events throughout the year, often focused on giving. One of these is the Campaign of Israel, in which members are encouraged to give above and beyond their tithes and offerings, some greater amount called a complete sacrifice. The church's website says, Make a complete sacrifice. A sacrifice is giving up something of value to obtain something of greater value. It is impossible to conquer an object of great value when you are unwilling to give up something for it. A true sacrifice does not go halfway. It is complete. The blessing you want will require a complete sacrifice. For things that require God's help, you need to act out your faith. Your faith has to manifest in a concrete way, both spiritually and financially. Make sure your sacrifice is total and complete. 
In 2001, G. Van Vassikar, writing for the UK newspaper The Guardian, reported on a church event in the UK. All this is brought into sharp focus at the end of the service when the preacher turns to the subject of fundraising. Drug dealers have plenty of money, Marcelo says. New nightclubs are built every day, but there is never enough money for God's work. We need offerings to build more churches, he says. Is there anyone here who will give 50 pounds or more? A woman goes to the front and writes out a check. An extraordinary Dutch auction commences as the assistant bishop asks, is there anyone who will give 30 pounds or more, 20 pounds, anyone who will take an envelope and come back next week? Another church-wide event is the Fast of Daniel. Bishop Joshua connected this event with people being baptized with the Holy Spirit, saying on his blog and podcast, The Fast of Daniel will end on June 9th, where bishops and pastors will be broadcasting live, all the way from the cenacle of the Holy Spirit, and will be just like the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit will come down and baptize his people with the Holy Spirit. The church connects problems in life to evil spirits, and events and services may be held to cast out those spirits. Bishop Joshua says, There are people who go to the doctor and always receive a bad report. Others can't seem to ever enter into a relationship and make it last. Still, others get fired from every job for no apparent reason. And some even say that every single area of their life is messed up. There is absolutely no happiness or fulfillment in their life. These are signs that there is an evil spirit working in the life of that person. Maybe you ask, how could he possibly know that? The answer is because you know the tree by the fruit. Additionally, Bishop Joshua connects certain problems, like addiction, to be an indication that a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He says, Now let's be honest and clear. A person with the Holy Spirit inside of them will not be struggling with an addiction. A person with the Holy Spirit should not ever feel suicidal. Someone with the Holy Spirit may feel down sometimes, but they will quickly remember God's promises for them and overcome it. As was mentioned earlier, the church is Trinitarian, although non-standard teaching on the Trinity seems to come down from high levels of the church. Bishop Joshua writes, The Holy Spirit is God himself. United they are not three, they are just one. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. Whenever we say Jesus, we are saying Holy Spirit. Whenever we say Holy Spirit, we are saying God. They are all one. Particularly, the claim that the Holy Spirit is Jesus goes against the teaching of all other Trinitarian denominations, which, although they affirm that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one in essence and all God, deny that Jesus is the Father, or that the Father is the Holy Spirit, or that the Holy Spirit is Jesus. Bishop Macedo also teaches on the Trinity in an unusual way, saying on the church website in reference to the phrase, Lord Jesus Christ, the name God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit is inserted in this name. Lord, God the Father, Jesus, God the Son, and Christ, God the Holy Spirit. I don't know, nor do I have the revelation of the mystery behind the Holy Trinity. By faith I fully accept, without the shadow of a doubt, what the Bible teaches me. Macedo applied the words of Lord, Jesus, and Christ to the three persons of the Trinity. The rest of Christianity, other than oneness Pentecostals, would reject this, as the Holy Spirit is never called Christ in the Scripture, a title reserved for Jesus alone. Sarah Nice's report on her attendance at Universal Church services includes a description that can tell you about the atmosphere in some of the congregations. She says, True to Pentecostal character, especially regarding Neo-Pentecostalism, UCKG services are extremely lively with constant music, singing, dancing, and shouting. In these relatively smaller churches that I visited, the pastors sing on a microphone for about two-thirds of the two-hour services. They talk loudly over organ and CD music for the other third of the time. Adherents are encouraged to stand, sway, and wave their hands the entire time, and they are also occasionally asked to join hands with those around them. The church and its leadership do get involved in politics, particularly in Brazil. Because of this and the notoriety of Adir Macedo, seen in this headline page from Bloomberg Businessweek, the church has become very well known in its home country. Additionally, the church holds conferences and large events internationally, such as their successful Love School, not always branding these events prominently with the church's name. The church is continuing expansion with offices and websites for different countries around the globe. Other Christian denominations like the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God are covered in detail here on the Ready to Harvest YouTube channel. I hope you'll go ahead and check it out.